Valorant is a 5v5 first person shooter game with interesting agents, eye catching gun skins, and fun maps to learn how to strategize with. What the average player may not realize though is that there's a hidden story behind Valorant and it goes deeper than you may think. So I'm going to speedrun basic lore in 5 minutes to try to influence you to go out and look up more lore yourself. When you load into the game, there are two teams fighting each other to plant the spike or defuse the spike. There's multiple Earths in the Valorant universe, but the game showcases two. On one side, the agents who defuse the spike are part of Alpha Earth, which is supposed to be a representation of our Earth, or technically the good side. So, are we still the good guys? The agents who plant the spike are part of Omega Earth, an alternate reality to our Earth, the same people with very similar personalities, but they have a different motive. It all started with the first light. In 2039, something happened that changed the structure of our world. It brought about a thing called Radionite, something never seen before by anyone, but it was extremely powerful. People who were exposed to the Radionite ended up developing magical abilities, which explains why only some of the agents in the Valorant Protocol have powers, like Reyna or Neon. The agents that don't have powers manufactured the Radionite to help give them practically superhuman abilities through technology, like Viper or Killjoy. Back on Alpha Earth, the Kingdom Corporation was made. They run the Valorant Protocol and try to use Radionite for good, or at least their idea of good. In reality, they take over places with no care for others and only care about how it will help them. There's one good thing they did though, and that was creating the Valorant Protocol. They were created to help defend against people who may use their powers for evil, either finding a way to stop them or often recruiting them to the Protocol like Fade. This was the original intention of the Valorant Protocol until Omega Earth appeared, coming through portals to Alpha Earth with the plan to steal their Radiantite with new technology called the Spike. How come they look like us? And what do they want our Radiantite for? Back on their Earth, the Radiantite supply is dwindling, but they need it to fuel their economy. They decided to resort to stealing it from another world, arriving through portals, in this case, our world. But it causes devastating effects to the world around it. This just in. Reports of a disaster in Italy. The Valor Protocol shifted their attention to stop these agents as well. And that's only the basic background. The best place to get started with deeper Valorant lore is shown through the cinematics that Riot game releases from time to time. They do a great job at getting people engaged with the game with these, and they're very well produced as well. I encourage everyone to watch them, but I plan to summarize them here to get you started. The first being Duelists, which shows the first time that Alpha Earth encountered these alternate agents and revealed the spike. Phoenix goes to investigate an unknown assailant in Venice, Italy and stop her. Hey! Stop! Uh, I said stop! The assailant revealed herself as Jet from Omega Earth and managed to plant the spike, causing what is known as the Venice Incident and making the map we all know as a sick today. The next cinematic is Duality, which fully reveals that there's two of each agent, one in each world. It starts off with the news showing the after effects of the Venice Incident, and then goes to the Alpha agents arriving on Bind to stop the Omega agents from stealing the Radiantite with the spike. This time, with a gadget that Killjoy makes on the spot that is able to defuse the spike. Here, Phoenix sees a mere copy of himself, which helps open everyone's eyes to the existence of two worlds. Hands up, come on! And the next cinematic retake. It's more of an introduction to Yoru and Icebox, hinting that Yoru found his mask in the Icebox map, which is shown on a site on the right side when you enter the site from attackers. Otherwise, it doesn't reveal much more lore than that. The same applies to the warm-up cinematic, which is the much more lighthearted cinematic to show some behind the scenes of the Valorant Protocol training. The last cinematic we've seen is the Shattered cinematic, which takes place when the map Pearl was released. The Valorant Protocol put together a team of agents to go through a newly made portal to Omega Earth. Reyna, Killjoy, and Neon. They make it inside the map we know as Pearl, but are confronted by Viper on Omega Earth and a weird-looking militia which tries to draw the agents away. They all manage to escape after a fight and end up in a comic store where it's revealed that agents on Omega Earth seem to be idolized, known as the Legion instead of Valorant Protocol. This reaction is the exact opposite of what seems to be happening on Alpha Earth, where agents are supposed to be secret. So far, those are the only cinematics out, though that's not the only lore present today. It can be found in many different places, for example the voice lines. Voice lines are very important to Valorant, as while you are playing the game, the agents will talk to each other or their Mirror Earth counterparts and reveal some interesting secrets. Ko in particular has a lot of interesting lore with his voice lines, and a whole other world than the two we know. Another Raven. I killed her in the war. I'll kill her again. While I won't get into that much, I encourage you to listen to voice lines as you play the game and see what you can learn about each agent's past or even some lore about the maps. Another place lore is very out in the open is the range. While the player goes there to warm up, if you just look behind you, there's a whole story you're missing out on. Currently, there are three main spots to see the lore. Cypher's office, which is right behind the shooting practice, the bulletin board, which is a little further back, and Brimstone's office, which can be found through a little walk down some stairs. 
The problem with the range is that every update, the lore present in these spots change to continue the narrative, so previous lore becomes inaccessible after updates. If you want to look more into the lore yourself, I recommend you check out Kingdom Archives, a fan-made website that's compiles all the agent voice lines, emails in Brim's office, and the voicemail he receives on his phone. If you would like to get more involved in the current lore yourself, but don't necessarily want to search up the individual information, the Valorant Lore Wiki has compiled almost everything up to now. When it comes to future updates, though, social media is the way to go. There you can actively see people getting engaged in the community and meet other people who could be theorizing about what's coming up. To get started, some good accounts to check out on Twitter are Disturbo, at not to disturb and Schick, at Schick. Disturbo will post the agent voicemails and emails and talks about them there, while Schick will dig in the game files as well to find new voice lines that are added to the game yourself, or so you can hear new ones as they come out. It's also great to engage in conversation on Twitter, or in the comments of these posts to theorize with other people and debate about what the game is releasing next. For now, that is all, but hopefully this makes you more interested to look into the lore yourself, to find even more behind the scenes. All sorts of people play this game, as they do a really good job influencing players to check it out, and all the videos they put out actively encourages their audience to theorize about what's to come next. It makes the game much more compelling to play, and does a really great job at it. Oh, this game sucks. Yeah. I'm oh, going